Through the ages, India has given the world men who have dedicated their lives to renunciation, to the austere life of asceticism in their search for spiritual enlightenment. In India, they are called sadhus, which means holy man, ascetic, renouncer or wanderer. The sadhus have renounced everything, family and all material comforts. They have a life of constant wandering, gathering together for religious events, otherwise living in isolation. In spite of the rapid changes in Indian society, the people continue to embrace their ancient teachings of asceticism as a means of approaching the divine state. And so, sadhus are highly respected among the population and are venerated as saints. It is believed that there are between 8 and 10 million sadhus living in India today. There are several sects of sadhus. Some follow Lord Shiva, others Lord Vishnu, two of the divine powers of God. Shiva is represented in Indian iconography with his hair plaited and wound around his head. Shiva sits in a yoga position in eternal meditation. He lives in the forests high in the Himalayas. The sadhu, imitating the god with whom he identifies, marks himself using ash from the holy fireplace. The ash has a regenerating quality. The sadhu gives and radiates spiritual energy. To be in the presence of a sadhu or to receive food from him is considered a blessing. This, the fireplace in India they call Duni, Duni, Duni. It's the only fireplace. This, we, we can imagine that this is the mouth of God, no? So every, we believe that everything we put in the fire just the mouth of God. So if you want to have good karma, you have to put very good things inside. Sadhu. Here in India they consider me as a holy man, no? They don't see me as a Westerner because I am from Roma, Italy. They see me as a saint. They treat me as a saint. Wherever I go, I got free ticket in the train, in the bus, everybody give me food. Wherever I go, people help me in some way because they feel that I am a saint. They take the offering, what people give. No, they don't go around to ask money. This is not for Baba. The people, the Baba sit, so the people give to the Baba. Sadhus, or Babas, as they are sometimes called, do not have a permanent home. So the temple grounds are often a place where the sadhu may stop to make a temporary home. He carries just enough to make a simple bed. To become a saint, you need rules. You need many rules. Every day you have to pray, every day you have to, 
get up early in the morning, take bath, uh, one hour pray, uh, to do clean this, uh, clean the, all the mood, the start of the God in the temple, no? Sadhu devotes many hours of his day to worship in the temple. His duties include cleaning the temple and placing fresh flowers. A saint uh, have not to have sex, no? because he is a brahmachari. Brahmachari means that you have no wife. So most, 90% of the Baba, they go around, they, they are sad, all immense, they go in the cave, they go all around. They have no time to have uh, this wife on the back, no? There is a sect of naked sadhus. For them, nakedness is the stripping away of all material desires. Sometimes the only thing they may carry is a water pot used for drinking water or water for purifying rituals. Generally, sadhus wear shades of orange, ochre, yellow or white, the colors of purity and surrender. By observing the age-old laws of yoga exercises and meditation, the sadhu is able to control the flow of energy through the body. Uh, work is uh, to keep balance, no? To keep the balance, no? In the, in the invisible. In the invisible, we have to keep balance, no? There's much confusion around, but there are also many centers that they make the, the right balance. By controlling the energy along the meridian lines and chakras, which are doors to universal energy, the sadhu is able to have great power over his body. Some sadhus are able to levitate or can stop their own heartbeat for some minutes. Even magical powers are attributed to the sadhu to the point of making themselves invisible. It is believed that the sadhu knows when he is going to die and also how and when he will reincarnate. Different sects of sadhu can be recognized by the different markings on their bodies. These U-shaped markings are the sign of a Vishnu follower. The painting sanctifies the body into a vessel fit to receive divine power. Identify yourself with God. So the main yogi say to realize God, you have to eliminate the duality between you and God. No? No more two, only one. So me and you, the object of my meditation is God. No? So I'll become as God, same. Oxygen, oxygen, full, full, oxygen, out. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, out, 
out, out, cats, In. out, cats, out, cats. Om no Siva Om no. Oxygen. Yes. Groups of sadhus sitting in circles around the sacred fire in veneration of their divinity smoke clay pipes called chillams filled with hashish. There exists a profound conviction that hashish has a considerably stimulating effect on the perception. It has the effect of placing the user in a state of peaceful ecstasy which allows union with the divine. The symbol for the chilom is that. The chilom is like shivalingam. You see, it's standing, no? It's shivalingam. Here I make the mudra of the mother. This is the mother. Hmm? the vulva, the mother, this mudra. When I put the chilom here, is a Shiva Parvati, Shiva Shakti. Hmm? This is the symbolism. I call the God I like, Shiva, Shambo, Shambo is also one name of Shiva, Bom Shankar, another mantra is a Shankar, means peaceful. Different sects of sadhus from across India meet together at huge religious gatherings at pilgrimage sites. They meet and exchange ideas in spite of the diversity of traditions. The Duni, the sacred fire, is also a place of socializing. Whatever the sadhu is doing, if it is cooking or praying, he does it with undivided attention and artistry. All actions are regarded as rituals of worship and meditation, so that even everyday activities are infused with the spirit of the divine. The Hindu mystic believes that this life is only a passage to purify our soul from the karma of our past lives. Man goes through innumerable reincarnations until finally reaching unity with God. Many sadhus travel constantly from one sacred place to another, sometimes cross.